welcome learner department of collegiate and technical education has provided us online teaching and learning platform through lms under this program we take up the course pcb design and fabrication lab for fifth semester diploma in electronics and communication engineering students under this unit 1 introduction to pcb under this session 1 introduction to pcb definition printed circuit board commonly known as pcb in which electronic components are electrically connected using conductive tracks in pcb one side of the pcb consists of conductive tracks and other side consists of copper clad material or base material that is the insulating material but in case of double sided pcb the copper clad sheet consists of copper on both the side of the laminate material these traces etched from copper sheets laminated onto a non conductive substrate a non conductive substrate is present above that copper sheet is laminated or copper sheet is present on that copper sheet pcb traces are etched it is also known as a printed wiring board or etched wiring board need and relevance of the pcb an electronic equipment is a combination of electrical and electronic components connected to produce a certain design function the electronic components are connected to produce a certain design function for that pcb is very much essential for the design specifications and for dielectric constant here plays a major role in the pcb therefore pcb is needed or pcb is very much essential for certain design function in the era of vacuum tubes the electronic equipment were constructed by hand wiring and by point to point soldering in olden days electronic components were connected by using wires and wires were soldered either points these wires were stripped of their insulation tinned and soldered the equipment was obviously large and bulky in that olden time period the equipment size was very large and bulk the diagram here shown how the components were connected in olden days the components were tied somewhere here and solder with soldering and this end is connected here with lugs and screwed here there is no trace is patterned on the copper clad sheet in this box here entirely the connections are made by wires and soldering there is no any pcb traces present here therefore the equipment size is very bulk and large here in order to avoid that pcb is required when the circuits are complicated in a real time world it was very difficult to meet the specifications required in the digital world by using the component to component solder in real time world to meet the specifications required for the digital world we need a sophisticated pcb by using multi layer board therefore pcb is very much essential it was difficult to meet the demands of the aircraft health sector and home appliances aircraft health sector and home appliances requires their own design specifications aircrafts and health sector works on real time operating systems therefore the pcbs designed for those specifications are complex and time constraints are required thereby necessitating development of smaller and more compact electronic equipment designed 
within a small piece of a copper clad sheet. Within a copper clad sheet, we can design a more complex design. Background and history of the PCB. PCB circuit board in an old radio is shown here. Here, copper traces are present wherever it is possible. If the copper traces are not possible to root on this layer, are connected by using wires by manual soldering. Background and history of the PCB In the early 1850s, large electrical components were placed on a large wooden boards connected by electrical wires. Components are placed on wooden boards and connections are made by electrical wires. Later, the electrical wires were replaced by metal strips. The metal chassis were lighter and easier to handle compared to the wired connections. These systems gave way to creating a conducting path on an insulated surface. These metal strips are made a in conducting path on the insulating surface. This was the beginning of the usage of the printed circuit. The invention of the PCB has been edited by or credited by credited to Paul Eisler. Paul Eisler is the father of the PCB design, an Austrian engineer who made the PCB as a part of the radio set in 1936. In the year of 1936, he has designed the PCB for a radio set. In 1943, during the World War II, there was a need for a mass production of the radio sets and the PCB technology developed was put into use. USA made effective use of technology to make radio sets that could be used during the war, during the World War II. By 1950s, the usage of printed circuits become common with the development of the auto assembly process developed by US Army. This was followed by the through hole technology replaced later by surface mount technology. Later, US has developed the surface mount technology. The diagram shown here is the Paul Eisler, an Austrian engineer. He has designed the pattern of PCB by his own handwriting. This was the first PCB has prepared by him. SCR 284 radio set used during the World War II. This is a radio set as for productive production has done in mass manufacturing. Many number of radio sets were designed. For many number of radio sets, most of the PCBs were constructed and most of the PCBs were manufactured. Therefore, World War II made a remarkable progress in the PCB. Types of PCB Depending on number of layers, single-sided PCB, double-sided PCB and multi-layer PCB. Single-layer PCB consists of only one conductive layers. Double-sided PCB consists of two conductive layers. Multi-layer PCB consists of more than two conductive layers. Single-sided PCB Single-sided boards have components on one side. Copper traces on the opposite side of the components are preferred. PCBs contain only one layer of substrate or base material whose one side is covered with a thin layer of metal and other layer does not consist of thin layer of metal. Outside the copper there is a layer of solder mask that plays a protective role in the PCB. The solder mask layer provides protection to the PCB from the external environment such as from moisture. Advantages of the single side PCBs low cost, low rate of issues during the manufacturing process. Manufacturing process is very easier, suitable for simple circuits.
advantages of the single side pcbs single layer pcbs have relatively wide field of applications ranging from power supplies relays sensors leds calculators printers and electronic toys because a single layer pcb is preferred here because of easy repair and servicing purpose single sided pcbs have some performance limitations in case of complex circuits double layer pcbs or multi layer pcbs should be preferred if the circuit is more complex if the tracks are not possible to accommodate within the one layer then double layer and multi layer pcbs are preferred double sided pcb double layer printed circuit board is a little complex than the single sided pcb because it consists of tracks on both the side it is very tricky compared to the single side pcb these types of pcb have one single layer of the base substrate but conductive layer on both the side of the substrate there is a laminate material present here that has copper on either side of the laminate solder mask is applied on both the side of the board holes for electronic component have to be plated through for conductivity on both the circuits the holes are present in the pcb are plated during the manufacturing process in a double sided pcbs electronic components are soldered on both the side of the pcb components can be placed either side of the pcb but care must be take care the components which having the more height should not place on bottom side of the pcb if the pcb is fixing on the rack or fixing on the track by using rack by using screws more heighted components will touch the chassis of the track or outer box of the track double sided pcb two sides of the double sided pcb this is a one side this is the another side the top layer rooted with the x axis and the bottom layer rooted with the y axis in the pcb if you try to take this connection at the top layer there will be a short circuit in order to avoid the short circuit these connections are made on the bottom layer green color is the solder mask area provided in the pcb this is a drill hole present in the pcb and the copper here is called as a annular ring annular ring is used to solder the component lead double sided pcb double side pcb have the components and circuitry on both side of the board component can place either side of the pcb the electrical connections between the circuits on each side are made by drilling holes through the substrate in appropriate locations by dropping the wires we can make the electrical connection from one layer to another layer plating the inside of the holes with a conductive material the wire holes and through holes are plated with copper during the manufacturing process double layer pcb is allowing for the routing traces on both the side of the pcbs double layer pcb is have conductive layers on both the side of the substrate the base material the laminate material or the core material that is used for manufacturing the pcb has copper on both the side of the laminate or copper on both the side of the core material components are also placed on both the side of the pcb this is the layer arrangement of the two layer board this is a copper clad sheet this copper clad sheet consisting of a core material that core material has the thickness of 1.5 mm thickness this is a copper layer this is a copper layer of the bottom 
layer. The copper thickness here 0 0.035 mm thickness. That is called 1 ohms thickness. The copper thickness here also 1 ohms. Solder mask thickness is 0 0.01 mm at the top and solder mask thickness 0 0.01 mm at the bottom. The total thickness of the PCB is 1.6 mm. 1.6 mm is the standard thickness of the PCB. We can design the PCB for 1.54 mm thickness or 1.5 mm thickness or 1.7, 1.8, 2mm, 2.4 mm also. But here double layer PCB is manufactured with 1.6 mm thickness. Advantages, more flexibility for designers. It is more flexible for the designers to route the tracks on both the sides. An increase of circuit density. Circuit density can be increased because for routing space available in the PCB is doubled. Relatively cost, low cost. The cost of the material is less because the size of the PCB is reduced here. Reduced board size. Reduced board size indirectly reduces the cost of the material used. Optimum use of available space as there is space for components on both the side of the board. In double layer PCB, components can place on either side of the board. Therefore, the space constraint is removed or space constraint is solved. It can be used in numerous electronic devices. Double layer PCB can be used for most of the applications. More complicated project can be designed by using double layer PCB. Multi-layer PCB. If the PCB consists of more than two layers, then it is called as multi-layer board. More than two layer means it should not be an odd number of layers. Three layer, five layer, seven layer, nine layer PCBs are not available. Always multi-layer PCBs are available with even number of layers in order to provide the property of symmetry. Multi-layer board should contain at least one ground layer depending on the number of layers. Multi-layer PCB must consist of one ground layer. If the number of layers are four, six, then one ground layer is preferred. If the multi-layer board consisting of 10 layer, 12 layers, the number of ground layers also increase in order to give the good design for the PCB. Multi-layer board can be designed by using prepreks and laminates. Prepreks are the materials used for the PCB. These are the flexible materials. These are all the dielectric materials uh, which can be FR4 material or polyamide or roger or Teflon can be used. Laminates are the rigid material that we cannot bend, but pre we can bend, which is like paper, which is flexible. And pre are inserted in between the laminates. Multi-layer PCBs allow the designer to produce complex designs. If the design is complex, then Obviously, we have to go for multi-layer PCBs. Depending upon the complexity of the board and depending upon the high speed signals present in the board, depending upon the which processor is used in the PCB. A six layer multi-layer must contain at least one ground plane and a, pow and a power plane. A six layer PCB must consist of at least one ground plane and one power plane or it must consist of at least two ground planes if a power plane is not present. The number of layers in multi-layer always even number of layers as I told earlier. Laminate used in multi-layer board. This is the pattern of the laminate used in the multi-layer board. 
fiber glass is present at the center either side of the fiber glass consists of resin material totally this is called as laminate apart from that copper is present at the top and copper is present at the bottom then only this is called as a laminate ten layer pcb the diagram shown here is the stack up of the ten layer pcb how the ten layer pcb is arranged you might be knowing the double layer pcb and single layer pcb is but you may not be knowing about the how the ten layer pcb is arranged now this is a core material is used this core material consists of pre prag this is not pre prag this is laminate material dielectric material with copper on both side this is one copper clad sheet and this is the another copper clad sheet this is the another one copper clad sheet totally 1 2 3 4 5 copper clad sheets are required to design the 10 layer pcb in between the copper clad sheets pre prex are inserted at least two pre prex are inserted here the pre prex are available with the thickness 0.0635 mm or 0.1 mm thickness the copper the copper available here the laminate available here may be 0.15 thickness 0.15 mm thickness or 0.2 mm thickness that is depends on what is the total thickness of the pcb first we have to decide here what is the thickness of the pcb is required if the thickness of the pcb is more is okay for the designer then we we can use 0.2 mm thickness laminate here 0.2 0.2 0.2 Point two, point two, then point two into five, then it will be one mm thickness. Then add the pre-prac thickness zero point six three five, zero point six three five. Here two pre-pracs are used. Here two pre-pracs are used. The top layer is preferred for routing high speed signals. Here the bottom layer is also preferred for routing the high speed signals. Ninth layer is entirely assigned for the ground. Entire second layer is assigned for the ground, and entire fifth layer, sixth layer is assigned for the ground here for tight coupling and absorbing the noise present in the multi-layer board. This is a routing pattern present in the multi-layer board. Uh, this is a clip of the DDR2 signals. How these DDR2 signals are routed from memory to chip. Here one memory IC is present in the multi-layer board. Here one memory is present. The tracks from the memory to processor is routed in this pattern. In the inner layers, these are all the tracks present in the inner layers shown here. the gray colored signals or tracks present here are the top and bottom layer tracks advantages of the multi layer pcbs reduction of the board size and weight higher level of density and flexibility capable of implementing multiple functions better at dealing with the interference types of pcb depending on the material used the type of the pcb is again classified into rigid pcb and flexible pcbs what is rigid pcb it is made of paper base glass cloth preso phenolic resin or epoxy resin the surface on one side or two side stick to copper clad laminated rigid pcb consists either one side with the copper or both the side with the copper the pcb copper clad plate we call it the rigid plate because the copper present here is also the rigid and the material used here is also the rigid if you try to bend the rigid pcb it will damage the board rigid pcb rigid pcb rigid plate is not easy to bend 
it is very hard advantage is that that can be attached to its electronic components provide certain support pcb is attached to the electronic components and that provides a support to the components this is the picture shown here is the rigid pcb now flexible pcb a printed circuit board produced on thin flexible substrate allowing it to be folded or bend in order to fit in a available space or allow relative movement see here relative movement can be made and we can fold it and insert it somewhere this flexible pcb part of the pcb is connected to the rigid part of the pcb this end has connections this is connected to another rigid pcb questions now smd stands for a surface memory device b surface module device surface mounting device surface mount device here the answer is d surface mount device the pcb which has two conducting layers one ground plane and one power plane is called ground and power pcb b digital pcb c analog pcb d multi layer pcb here the answer is multi layer pcb because there are four layers here two electrical layers one ground and one power plants this is not called as digital pcb the digital pcb definition is the pcb which consists of digital components is called digital pcb such as adc dac and all analog pcb the pcb which consists of analog circuit elements the analog circuit elements are very sensitive to the noise the circuit which consists of analog components only then it is called as analog pcb third question following is the dielectric material used for manufacturing the pcb a rotor b fr4 c polymide d all the above all the above rotor fr4 polymide all are used to design the pcb are used as a laminate material or pre prepared material this is a material used for manufacturing the pcb here dielectric constant of fr4 is 4.3 rotor is in the range of 2 and polymide dielectric constant is in the range of 3.6 the dielectric constant of air is 1 pcb stands for a printed circuit board b print component board print circuit breaker none of the above solution is printed circuit board these are all the references for above slides thank you for watching